When emergency first responders were overwhelmed by Los Angeles County's most destructive fire yet, a band of surfers, along with their neighbors and friends, stepped up to defend their home turf in Malibu. Their devotion to home drove them to show up for their community during the fire and for years afterward. And now, a model they call the Community Brigade Program could change everything leading to more lives and more homes saved during the increasing wildfires across not just California, but the world. Join reporter Adriana Cargill from KCRW, NPR's All Things Considered, Crooked Media, and more, as she investigates a wildfire story that is not depressing, but is, in fact, a clear hope for the future. Listen now to Sandcastles, an award-winning podcast about home, how we create it, and why we fight so hard for it. This week, 10 questions you should absolutely ask a company before you use their fun new AI tool. And later, the news. Gut inflammation news. California insurance gets harder to find. 750,000 adults just lost Medicaid insurance. What non-vaccinated COVID actually does to your lungs. And more. But first, I'm Quint Emmett, and this is important, not important. Science for people who give a shit. The newsletter features the most important science news, or just the news at this point, because that's what's driving it. Anyways, how you can think about it, and most importantly, what the hell you can do about it. Hit subscribe right now to get this newsletter and my conversations with the world's smartest people in our traditional podcast every single week. Of course, you can find the email version and links to everything at importantnotimportant.com or right in your show notes. It's June 2nd, 2023. Here's your weekly action steps. Last week's most popular action step is probably still pretty popular, which is checking out your real-time air quality data with Purple Air. Secondly, PFAS or PFAS or Forever Chemicals have been linked to serious health problems. Urge Congress to ban PFAS from all food contact materials by using the script we have in the show notes from Toxic Free Future. Number three work in marketing? Join Clean Creatives, a movement of advertisers and PR professionals, and pledge to cut ties with fossil fuels. And lastly, and I use this every single day, reclaim your right to privacy online with the MULVAD, M-U-L-L-V-A-D, MULVAD VPN. And now, today's big question. What are the 10 questions you should absolutely ask a company before you use their fun new AI tool? Look, Before we get to them, understand this. There's trade-offs to everything, right? From crushing an entire box of Girl Scout cookies to taking on another round of chemo or moving or moving schools or a new job, whatever it is. What seems like an easy, if not great call in the moment, almost always has some sort of long-term consequences, and that's okay. But you have to weigh them. And this is especially true online, as we call it, which is a vast wonderland and a hellscape that basically didn't exist when I was in high school, but is now permeated, empowered, and infected everything from how you communicate with your coworkers to Wi-Fi and GPS-enabled vibrators and electric lawnmowers. In some cases, the trade-offs are both immediately evident and clearly worth the cost. So that's how we gambled. We spent the past decade willingly providing Facebook and Google and others with our most intimate data in exchange for connecting us for free with old friends and new friends. And we gave them our pictures, and we ten tagged ourselves, and we tagged our friends in them, whether our friends knew or agreed or not. As GPS became available for civilian use, we gave those platforms, suddenly among the largest companies of all time, our location data, and we gave it to a bunch of upstarts too. We gave them our names, our kids' names, our birthdays, our home address, our work address, our wedding dates, the names and addresses of our pediatricians and abortion clinics, our kids' soccer fields and the days we're usually there and pictures of them there. Uh, We gave them our favorite bars, our private DMs, and our voice, our pictures, our video, our doorbell camera footage, our opinions, our meeting notes, our sonograms, and everything else. A few months ago, when AI was really first Popping off for everyone now, I wrote an article called What Do You Need About Our Collective Browsing History? And this is just a small part of it. Talking about the last 10 years, it was 
no longer so difficult to keep up with close friends and family, and eventually even further with former colleagues and sorority sisters. It was revelatory, that period. But it wasn't enough, because maybe, sometimes, you just didn't want to see my frequent It's Complicated relationship updates. But you really liked when Frank shared his marathon training updates. And so in 2009, Facebook introduced the Like button. In 2011, after a couple years of compiling a then rudimentary layer of user preferences, including by extending the Like button beyond Facebook itself to the entire internet, the newsfeed was changed from a chronological presentation to one algorithmically driven by how often and where you mashed that Like button. In 2012, ads came to the newsfeed to pay for all this computing power, ads increasingly hyper-targeted to you based on just how much of your personal information you were willing to share. We never looked back. We never looked back because that would require taking a long, hard look at who we are and why we keep building the same tools. It would require looking back at who got left behind and why. It would require us asking questions like, is this new tool something we're capable of handling? And what harm might it cause alongside incalculable profits? Cut to today. In 2022, platforms and companies and users that had been fucking around for quite a while finally found out as the Supreme Court obliterated privacy and your location and period data, among others, were suddenly being used as evidence in court. And now, on any given day, we're the biggest AI newsletter in the world. Uh, 600 of those trumpet 600 new AI tools and plugins and extensions, many of which are genuinely exciting and most of which are the products of either the biggest companies in the world or companies that didn't exist last Friday. It should be clear by now, but it really, really behooves you to be very, very careful about who you give any of your data to. Oh yeah, this new AI plugin can record your family Zoom about whether or not to finally unplug Uncle Dave so you don't have to take notes so it can provide you with an automated transcript and, even better, a summary of exactly which sibling said what and weirdly jumped at the opportunity to do the bastard in after all these years. Check the transcript. Check tape. It's right there. That's really helpful. But what else is that company doing with your voice and your audio and your family conversation? Do you have literally any idea? Many of these tools have immense promise to make us more productive, or even to contribute to a future we can't possibly predict, even if they'll inevitably flame out or be Sherlocked, as they call it, by one of the big five tech companies. But in nearly every situation, the ethical foundations are inevitably just not great, Bob. So instead of pounding out a couple thousand more words on why, I simply put together a list of standard questions you and I and everyone should ask these huge behemoths and these revolutionaries before you even download their software, much less install it, much less provide it with direct access to your context, calendar, email, writing, health data, photos, blood tape, whatever. And here's what my ask is. Here's what I want you to do. Share these questions. Listen to them here. Check the link in the show notes for the actual questions themselves and a really cool PDF we made so you can share it. And then, and then share it widely and publicly, among friends and, and to these companies. Tweet them, or whatever, at the companies and the CEOs and the VCs that fund them. And when they point you towards a hastily slapped together privacy policy, reiterate that no, you want them to answer these questions, your questions, directly. These questions aren't perfect, but they're simple, they're self-explanatory, and they're grounded in data ethics. And again, even better news, longtime designer friend, original any logo guy, Brian Flynn, whipped together a delightful image you can share. It's in the show notes. So, ready? All right, let's do this. Number one, what data of mine are you collecting? Two, where are you storing my data? Three, how is my data encrypted? Four, what safeguards do you have in place in case of a data theft, leak, or a breach? Number five, who has access to my data? Number six, why do they have access to my data? Number seven, who are you sharing my data with outside the company? Number eight, who has decision-making power around the use of my data? 
Number nine, is my data being used as training data? And number 10, if so, how are you de-identifying my data? And here's the bonus question that they should all be able to answer at this point, which is, how are you tracking me across the internet? That's it. They're simple, but they work. And they should be able to answer those before they ask you to do anything. Read them, memorize them, share them, and let's make answering them the most basic prerequisite to a better, safer, more ethical, and maybe way more futuristic internet. And now, here's the news. In climate change news, State Farm is no longer accepting homeowner insurance applications in California. That one's pretty complicated, but um, this is the way things are going at this point. Number two, what the debt ceiling deal means for the climate. We didn't get transmission done still. Number three, the White House Office Information and Regulatory Affairs is changing the way the government calculates the costs and benefits of regulation, all in the name of fighting pollution. We'll see how that goes. And lastly, how and where to build a strong manufacturing base for clean energy in the U.S. In COVID news, um, the New York Times published an incredible uh, piece on exactly what COVID does to the lungs of someone who was infected pre-vaccine. And second, we have probably narrowed down to the 12 most common symptoms associated with long COVID. And again, you can get those right in the show notes. In food and water news, how the debt ceiling agreement will put, has already put, as far as we can tell, 750,000 older adults at risk of losing food assistance. That probably has some crossover with the 750,000 people who have already lost Medicaid. So that's great. Uh, commodity farmers are using regenerative cover cropping to adapt to climate change, which is awesome. And a million plastic bottles are purchased worldwide every minute. Every minute. That is a shit ton. In health and bio news, most pregnancy-related deaths occur in the year after a baby is born, prompting new strategies in caring for new mothers. We've covered that relentlessly here. Uh, next, the science behind how chronic stress inputs, impacts gut health, and I definitely read that one. Next, nanoplastics. Think about the water bottle thing above. Nanoplastics are causing inflammation in the gut and brain, but the damage is reversible when they're removed. Next, Maybe everyone knowing where you are at all times isn't actually the healthiest thing for our relationships. And next, imagine being a teen worrying that everyone is hanging out with you and then confirming your suspicions are correct. Again, this ties into data ethics, this ties into tech, this ties into mental health, the, the whole thing. Uh, and in computer news, a summary of Wolfram Alpha's breakdown on what the hell is going on with chat GPT and LLMs. This is a really good breakdown. Um, Number two, it's time to start thinking about the governance of superintelligence. And last, Amazon has settled with the FTC for illegally spying on users and collecting just ridiculous amounts of kids' data. So that's great. That's it for this week. Hit subscribe to get next week's issue straight to your feed. To go deeper, visit importantnotimportant.com. Thanks for being a part of our community, and thanks for giving a shit. Have a great time.